Hi guys. It is a fine looking morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the great state of Texas. But we're going to head out to the great state of Oregon this morning where I have the great pleasure of speaking to none other than Les Knight. Uh, if that name doesn't mean anything to you, it will soon. He is the, well, I'm going to let him tell you what uh, he is, but I'm going to call him, for lack of a better word, a spokesman for the next uh, 45, 50 minutes for his group, the Voluntary, Voluntary Human Extinction Movement, not to be confused with the near-term Human Extinction Group. We'll make sure we understand that. And I'm just going to read the, the opening to, uh, less, to the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement's excellent website. This is one of the, the best websites I have found in a long time. Their motto, May We Live Long and Die Out, and I guess this is some sort of mission statement, phasing out the human race by voluntarily ceasing to breed will allow Earth's biosphere to return to good health. Crowded conditions and resource shortages will improve as we become less dense. And last night, come on board and say hello to the folks. Introduce yourself, how you want to be known. Tell us a little bit about your organization, and then we're going to talk briefly about what happens if we don't uh, voluntarily stop breeding. Take it away, Les. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. I don't want to threaten anybody with what will what, happen if we don't do this. Anyway, I'm Les Knight. <laughs> I'm a spokesperson for the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement. Uh, I'm often referred to as the founder, but I'm actually the finder. The movement was here all along. It just got lost amid all of the nameless propaganda. So I gave it a name, and now maybe it won't get lost so much. I uh, maintain the website, and I speak and whenever I get a chance in podcasts like this, and um, table and booth at uh, events. And it's really a lot of fun to share the idea, the concept, of our voluntarily phasing ourselves out. Okay, so so briefly, obviously, the first question, you know, and, 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 and as they, on his website, the way the way the the entire website is structured is is a series uh, of Q and A of questions and answers. I'm assuming, Les, you're the one who who wrote most of this, or am I making a? Yes, that's right. Okay, so Les is an excellent writer, guys. So let's spend a few minutes on what is the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement. Then we're going to jump forward to the failure and collapse portion of the website and then return back to what we're going to do at this point to avert it. So just give us a quick wrap-up what you're all about, Les. The name says it all. We want to voluntarily um, go extinct, but what we're doing is suggesting that people think before they procreate. And if people just think it all the way through, think about all the ramifications for themselves, the environment, society, uh, they probably won't do it. It's only our natalist propaganda, propaganda, our cultural conditioning, that keeps people procreating. And we, we always talk about having children, but we aren't really having children. We're creating a new human with a potential for 80 years hopefully 80 years, you know, don't want our kids to die early. But uh, it's, it's uh, very short-sighted of us to say, are you going to have a child? I want to have children. It's like saying you want to have a kitten. It's like, you, you know, there's going to be a cat pretty soon. Forget <laughs> about that. So, yeah, well, it's a cat. We'll just send it out. I don't want to live in my basement eating my food. So the... Before we go any further, I, 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 I just need to I, I just need to get this amplification and clarification out of the way since I know a lot of listeners here and I just interviewed some folks a couple of weeks ago from the near term human extinction that whole thing. You you are you and N T H E vehement and N T H E have really no no conscious overlap. Is that correct? 
Well, I think there's an overlap, sure. Uh, people who are thinking about the Earth situation and what is coming down the pike, some people might think, wow, it looks like we're going to go extinct really soon. And if they do, the last thing they want to do is add another human to have to suffer through this uh, extinction that's coming and the hard times that will come. But, you know, it's a funny thing. Even in near-term human extinction circles, they're reluctant to say that the intentional creation of one more human by anyone, anywhere, can't be justified today. Natalism is so strong that even when people know there's a really good chance we'll be extinct within uh, just a few decades, they still hang on to that idea that we want to procreate. Yes, uh, they do. I, I just wanted to, to make the point that, as you did, that there, there probably are a few people in the NTHE movement, like in, you know, that that uh, promote the voluntary extinction. But my guess is the sure. vast, the vast yeah. majority of NTHEers are still pro-natalist. That's the problem, yes. Uh -huh. Well, it, you know, it's really a strong, it, people think of it as almost biological, it's so strong, because they're conditioning from the very beginning of life that we will procreate. And some people figure that's what we're here for. So it really takes some, some serious thought to, um, to get beyond it, grow beyond that, and, and uh, achieve an awareness that, no, we don't have to procreate. Not only that, the last thing, the worst thing we can do for everyone, including ourselves, is add another human. Yeah. So let's, uh, a, 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 as I say, what I want to do since this is Collapse Chronicles, I want to jump way down into the website and I do encourage people, this is a very well-written, well-organized uh, website, but I, I want to jump down to the failure and collapse pages, and we're going to start, obviously. I mean, the, 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 the main question being discussed on the failure page is, okay, last night, what if we fail to voluntarily phase ourselves out? What so? What's the big deal? Why do we need to go? Oh yeah, well we can all join in the game of figuring out and guessing what's going to happen. Well, if you know, we can't predict the future, but if we keep uh, going where we're going, we're probably going to get there. So if we look at trends and um, think about how likely is it we will change this trend. In the past, how often have we uh, reversed course or changed in such a way that we wouldn't um, end up uh, with a collapse? And it doesn't look like it's happened very often. And we are heading, actually accelerating towards several collapses. So it's quite likely that it will happen, whether it happens economically, uh, on a civilization level, or a, an ecological level. Depends on which one happens first, I think. The um, collapse of the economic system might not precipitate a collapse of our civilization. We could uh, scrape it together. A collapse of our civilization would probably save the biosphere and it wouldn't wipe out humans. There will always be a few of us in that case. A collapse of the biosphere, which we are really accelerating with the uh, extinction, the sixth extinction, uh, that would do us in. That would uh, be the involuntary uh, human extinction. We, um, you know, there's nothing to eat on a dead world, and, and we are uh, killing the world. So there, there are three collapses that are possible. So what, what is, you, obviously you're a man, anyone who looks at the, this website, you are a man who has spent many years of, of your life studying studying this uh so did is it I, I don't want to put words in your mouth less but I, I do think i just heard you say that the the collapse of i'm assuming you're talking about global industrial civilization Correct. would in fact slow down and hopefully prevent the what, what I call the deep end of the the uh, doomsday prophecy pool which is the ecological collapse of this entire planet 
from us and everyone we share this planet with. Are, are you a, do, do you think the collapse of global industrial civilization is a, quote, good thing? It depends on who you are. <laughs> it would be <laughs> exactly. a good thing for the ecosystem. For Earth's biosphere, yes, because that's what's killing it. So, so every other one of our our fellow Earthlings, except with the exception of domestic animals, I assume, uh, would probably uh, be a supporter of the collapse of global industrial civilization. Yes, well, even our livestock might, if they could think it through. You know, at least they, <laughs> they're going to die anyway. At least they won't be forced to uh, propagate more of their kind to suffer through it. That, that so, is, yeah, that's true. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. But the, the uh, collapse of uh, industrial civilization and uh, postponing the die-off of uh, the biosphere would really be a postponement unless we, like the Native Americans who uh, are what the first peoples did with the extinctions that they caused, unless we learn a hard lesson and change everything, uh, and remember it into the future, what happens when we don't take the biosphere into consideration? We could be right back where we are again in a thousand years. Yeah, well, what what is your personal uh, belief in our ability to reverse these trends we're on. Are, are, are we at this point in, in here in 2018 going to turn this freight train around barreling barreling towards the, the, the entire earth? It, it's by, by the ideas you're seeing promoted that don't take an antinatalist position, uh, do you see anything from uh, techno-utopianism, green energy, whatever, moving to Mars, living in bunkers, or is anything short of the uh, extinction of humanity going to save this planet at this point? Well, as we phase ourselves out, there's a lot we need to do to uh, adequately clean up uh, our messes and to take care of those who are already here. And those will require all those things you're mentioning, less of, uh, you know, changes in energy sources and agriculture and all these things. But they'll all be much easier if our population is naturally becoming less dense instead of, you know, we're increasing by a quarter of a million a day. And if we were allowing uh, ourselves to um, die out and instead of adding more, then we would not only uh, have fewer people suffering if we failed to uh, prevent a, a drastic and, uh, and tragic uh, die off, those people would not suffer through it but we would also potentially prevent it from happening. If, uh, is there, well, let's go to the, the, the infamous Georgia Guidestones. Uh, 500 million people, uh, according to the Georgia Guidestones, that the planet should be able to, uh, to, to have room for 500 million people and still leave room for nature. Do you disagree yeah. with that statement? Well, I think the, the number of people depends on our lifestyles. Yeah. We might be able to support, I don't think we could support 7.6 under any lifestyle that anybody would want to have. But uh, a, um, a lifestyle like the one we have, you know, I, I don't think we could do 500 million. So it, it just depends on how we want to live. If we just want to scrape out, barely scrape out a living, then we can have quite a few people. If we all want to do very well and only live in the areas where uh, humans are uh, very comfortable, don't even have to wear clothes, uh, in uh, great places like that where we can feed ourselves off of trees, and you know, and then it wouldn't take uh, as long as we didn't return to. Uh, overpopulation, which is really hard to, to do. You know, it was only 70,000 years ago we were down to 10, 15,000 people. 
we're just so freaking fecund <laughs> that we increase very fast, given the opportunity, food, water. Yeah, it's that, uh, but the, my, my problem with the Georgia Guidestones is that word maintain the population at 500 million. I, it's, we're, we're, we're humans. We're, we're not going to maintain uh, as, uh, as long as, you know, as long as we have one more mountain range to cross, uh, we're, we're, there, there's, there's no way we're going to maintain. Uh, That's right, yeah. We're, we're really amazing uh, in our short-sightedness and uh, our, um, well, Jared Diamond gave us uh, reasons that uh, civilizations collapse, and one of them was rational bad, bad behavior, which is the tragedy of the commons, economic yeah. systems based on greed. Uh, we're all doing what's best for ourselves, and then collectively, it's not best for anybody. And that's what brings up, one of the things that brings about a collapse. Well, yes, what, what, one of one of many, for sure. So, yes. let's. Uh, I'm I'm looking at your collapse, uh, and, and folks, you real anyone on this channel that this is just a, a, what he's done here is uh, the, the, good Lord. You must have forty or fifty. Uh, links on here to all sorts of other essays and scientific studies and suggestions of of books to read. I like your apocalypse scale. Did you come up with the apocalypse scale? Oh no, I didn't. I wish I had. Oh, that's pretty cool, <laughs> isn't it? Pre-industrial and post-industrial. <laughs> This, this maps, yeah, this is the apocalypse scale from regional all, all the way up to the entire planet. Uh, so let, let's talk briefly about that because, you, you know, I, I, I can imagine, Les, how, how much of your time you defending, I don't know, defending your beliefs, or, or but, but there's so much misinformation, disinformation, uh, and just misperceptions out there. You, you, you know, one, one of the big ones is that we've been hearing that this doomsday stuff, uh, you know, going all the way back to Cassandra and Nostradamus, and we're still here stronger than ever, so it's never happened before, so it can't happen now. What, what is your general uh, <laughs> yeah. response? You know the one. Yeah, I, I don't know, maybe people need an analogy, like uh, we are speeding down the freeway and we haven't crashed yet. Yeah, there's a big embankment up there and we can see it, but we've never hit it. So there's no chance that we ever will. There's also the precautionary principle. It, if uh, it looks like there is a good chance that our activities will lead to disaster, we probably should change them so that that doesn't happen. And there's really no reason for us to continue. How many people do we need on this planet? Yeah. 7.6 billion isn't enough. We need to keep growing. There's no no need for it. Per, certainly no reason at all. So it's only pandering to existing uh, values to say, well, have fewer. Don't don't have as many. You know, just just have one or two maybe. You know, that's that's ridiculous. Only sentence one or two people to a dying planet. <laughs> No, one's too many. Yeah. So, uh, what, what is your what is your take on this? I mean, I, I don't. I didn't see this exactly address what I have been doing in in my limited way on in, in YouTube uh, on this channel and that and that other channel, which has been going on for eight and a half years now. Is 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 I am. I never cease to be amazed, Les, at, at, at all of the tsunami of ideas out there, how we're going to fix this mess for the few people who realize we're even in a mess. And, and they immediately jump to all of the ways we're going to fix this from the supply side, be it food, water, energy, housing, and nobody is talking about why don't we address this from the demand side. Can, can you do a rip on that for a... a... Sure, sure. There are uh, quite a few organizations uh, talking about that. Uh, 
In the UK, there's the uh, population matters, and here in the US, there's population connection. But I think if they really, if they really uh, look at, at uh, well, okay, they're in a, a difficult place. They may realize that the intentional creation of one more of us can't be justified, but they can't say that because they need a, a base. And at least they are uh, encouraging people to think about the connections between human population growth and everything else. Uh, most environmental organizations don't. The uh, Center for Biological Diversity is a, an obvious uh, exception. But they too are, aren't going to say we need to stop procreating completely. But more to what you were talking about, where we have people um, offering solutions, and they'll give you a list of 10 or so, and none of them, if they do, they'll, none of them include population. If they do, they'll say, have smaller families or something really simple like that. It doesn't really bring it all the way home. Is there any solution from the supply side that that you see uh, as uh, with, with, with any realistic chance without a without approaching this from the demand side, just pure supply side. Is is there anything out there that you that that you can see that could get us out of this mess? Uh, no, because uh, well, maybe us the humans. Yeah, but when yeah. you think about habitat and habitat loss. Uh, the more of us there are, the fewer uh, wildlife there are. Most uh, wildlife's been reduced by 50% in the last 30 years. So even if we come up with unlimited energy and all kinds of things that will keep us uh, happy, uh, it won't bring back all of the species that are going extinct. I, I have heard it commented uh, with, with some of my, my own listeners that if, if the worst thing we could do for the planet is to give humans a, an unlimited supply of free energy, that all that would do, is, good Lord, look, look, at, look at the mess we're making with, with what we have to work with now. Give us an unlimited supply of free energy and watch the planet uh, go e even, even quicker than fossil fuels are getting us there. Do you agree with that? Yes, in fact, you can see it in our, the Industrial Revolution. When we got the steam engine and coal, it was as if we had unlimited uh, energy and pretty cheap, too. And it changed everything. We can see how it changed it. So if we did it again, <laughs> wow, look out. Yeah, look, look out is right. Uh, let's... I want to talk about well, that, that overpopulation is, is again. I don't want to put put words into your mouth, but I want to hear you weigh in every time. And I know you have been through this one a million times. Whenever the term overpopulation comes up, is this is this debate whether it is overpopulation or overconsumption? You you hear it over and over again. My point is always. Uh, someone who was never born has a, an ecological environmental footprint of zero, but uh, what, is you, how, what do you tell people, uh, how do you weigh in into the overpopulation, overconsumption debate? Well, Richard Heinberg uses the term uh, um, overshoot. And so uh, the term overpopulation has become emotionally loaded, and I, I tend to avoid that because uh, people go, oh, you mean like Malthus? And so it, it has too many associations. But overshoot uh, includes both consumption and uh, population. As, uh, we need to consider both of them. Like Paul Ehrlich said that uh, uh, focusing on one is like um, – trying to find the area of a rectangle by only measuring one uh, side. So you need to multiply both of them. Uh, if we didn't do anything, our impact would be zero, but we do. And so it's, it goes up, the uh, better off we are. The more affluent we are, the more uh, impact we have, negative impact on uh, the biosphere. So I'd say it's both. I, that's, I'm not going to debate which, which one is worse. But like you say, if we didn't exist, we'd have a zero footprint. 
And, 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 of, and of course, uh, my, my very first interview on this channel was with, was with Paul. Uh, and then, of course, he always reminds people there is that third uh, part of the iPad equation, the technology uh, that, that people tend to forget is, is, is just uh, every day this technology Get, getting more and more just just completely what I call into the twilight zone so we got it's a three-headed snake uh, not not just a two-headed correct yes although with uh, uh, technology uh, some of it could uh, help ameliorate the situation it's not it's only like 90 percent bad instead of 100 percent so there's a calculation there that needs to be done but yeah his ipad uh formula just really does seem to hold true and it sure does and uh what do you what do you chalk it up to just this you you were mentioning that that uh just the very word overpopulation how it just why, why does that word just punch so many buttons with so many people? I mean, did, did this otherwise normal, rational, polite people, you get into this the talk and, and they just, what, why is it such a hot button issue for people just to admit there's too many people in the world? Well, it's us. We're people. How could there be a problem with too many of us? I mean, we're the greatest thing that's ever hit this planet. So, you hate people? What's wrong with you? Do you hate people last night? Oh, of course not. I'm one of them. Right. No, some of my best friends are people. Oh, if I hated people, I wouldn't be uh, advocating a voluntary human extinction. Uh, 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 okay, cause, so let, let's go into that. Now, you, you have one section of your website simply labeled death and uh so th this is the other thing what i call the alex jones crowd is that that you barely i mean forget overpopulation you get into that term population reduction all they hear is is you're immediately a eugenicist that's their favorite word is you're a eugenicist uh, you're a pawn, if not an architect, of the New World Order's depopulation agenda. Uh, you know, just 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 run run with that a little bit. Uh, what what do you do you have to say to uh, to to that whole argument that if you that if you want less people on the world, that means that obviously you want to kill ninety percent of uh, of the population of this planet. Yeah, right. But I think they are uh, projecting because what they are defending is eugenics, even though it's uh, not as obvious. Because uh, the the, uh, the way things are running right now, we have population control. People's, the population of people is controlled in the opposite direction. People are denied their uh, reproductive freedom. The basic human right to not procreate is denied to hundreds of millions, and maybe even a billion people, uh, people who don't want to procreate, and yet they are not allowed to. In a sense, that's eugenics. It's just not one that we usually think of. As far as depopulation goes, the, uh, the powers that be, the elite that... Alex Jones like to talk about. I have no interest in depopulating the planet. Obviously, Thank none you. of their policies that lead to that. They want the great unwashed masses. They do very well with that. They need them. So uh, I really think he's uh, um, projecting. Uh, it's, uh, it's it's like gaslighting almost. You know, it's like you guys want eugenics. Well, eugenics requires breeding. We're opposed to breeding. You have to have people procreating in order to have eugenics, and we're not in favor of that. And we're certainly not in favor of killing off 90%. When, when uh, people advocate for a smaller human population, the first thing that a lot of people think of is death. That's something I have to um, constantly remind people that there is another end to the equation. If we don't have as many born, we'll also have fewer people and there you sometimes scratch your head. Well, yeah, that's right, isn't it? 
It's kind of like a, a company that wants to right size instead of hiring anybody. They just stop hiring people, and as people retire, they get down to um, proper size. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it it's unbelievable how many people uh, ha have have a problem with this with those what I consider second grade level logic and math. That uh, if if the decreasing the birth rate is a much better, more humane option than increasing the death rate. As you point out, which uh, I, th I think people tend to forget, because I, I mean, some of my own friends who, who don't agree with some of my more radical positions, you know, just automatically assume that I, that, that, that I am a, a fan of war. That as a as a way to bring down the uh, population, but as as you pointed out uh, a couple of times in your excellent website, is that after wars, what tends to happen? The same thing you mentioned about the Black Plague, and whether it's it, whichever one of the members of the Horsemen of the Apocalypse is, after he rides, what you see. Is, is a rebound effect where you, you end up pretty rapidly w w with more people than you started with. And so this is just more reasons that increasing the death rate is... Can you run with that for a minute? Well, yeah. I mean, as if we needed more reasons not to have a higher death rate, <laughs> then uh, it's just impractical. So from a, a purely mathematical route, as you said, yeah, the victors and the losers both want to repopulate. But, you know, really, killing people, make increasing death, I mean, that shouldn't even be considered as a, a method of improving human existence or ecological existence or any existence. That's just, people are dying all the time and shouldn't. Tens of thousands of children die every day of preventable causes. It's a tragedy. We want to increase that? No, absolutely not. We want to decrease it. One way to decrease the number of deaths happening is to decrease the births, because everybody who's born will surely die sometime. And anyone who's not born will not be, will, will not have further kids. To, it's a, I, I don't know why this is so so hard of a so hard of a concept. Let, I want to do one more question on this death thing because I know you have heard this even more than I have. The, these, the, and I don't hear it as bad. I have to admit, in the past couple of years, these comedians have dropped off uh, a little bit off the trolls whenever you try to have this serious conversation. Well, why don't you just kill yourself? Why don't you, oh, yeah. you know, that all uh, make a, why don't you be the first one? If you're, if you're such a fan uh, of human extinction, why don't you lead the way and lead by example? <laughs> what do you have to say to that ignorant uh, well, I have, argument? I have a whole list of, of fun answers to that because it's been, it has been asked of me so many times I that, and I've listed them on the website, but mainly uh, they'll say, well, okay, you first. And I say, that's great. Now you. I got my vasectomy. It's your turn. Exactly. That. That. Thank you, brother. So, uh, what would it uh, accomplish? Is if is everyone who realized that uh, that humans are not uh, necessarily a good thing for this planet were, were to kill themselves, uh, what 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 would it accomplish if you or I? took ourselves out to the uh, to the problems on the on the planet. Yeah, it's not exactly setting a good example for for <laughs> others to follow. <laughs> oh, what a mess. I mean, uh, I guess there aren't that many of us. The mass graves would, you know, wouldn't be that difficult to to arrange, but no, that would that would of course be uh, ridiculous. But you know, there's a, a counterpart to that and that is uh, if all of us who feel this way don't procreate, yeah. then pretty soon we will die out and there will be no um, awareness of it. And that's as if the, the only way we can spread a, a, a good message is to uh, create a new person and fill them with it to, to carry it on. We're, we're reaching a lot more people by not procreating because we have more time to, to spend to let them know uh, about human activity and the connection with uh, the biosphere. 
I have, uh, I, 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 I know you have heard this one too, and, 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 and a couple of my close friends have actually used this uh, to my face that their kids, uh, of course, these are upper middle class white consumers living in nice homes, driving nice cars. Well, I'm going to raise my children to be environmentalist. I'm going to raise my children to respect the earth and, and, and whatnot. So my children aren't going to be, you, you've heard that argument. What is, your, what is your response to those people who actually with a straight face look at you and say that? Well, I, I wish them luck and, and, uh, and I wish them well and I congratulate them on their desire to, to do the right thing. But we, uh, none of us can have a net positive influence on the planet. Uh, we can try, we can undo a lot of what's been done, but uh, that I don't think you can have a, uh, an ecological human uh, in spite of <laughs> what they are imagining. And another one that people give is that my child may come up with a cure for cancer. Oh, yes, yeah, there and is that one. What about yeah. that? What do you say to that one? I forgot. Yeah, that's a great one, too. Yeah. Yeah, Mother of God. Well, um, I think that uh, there's a good chance that there were a lot of geniuses in the tens of thousands of children who died today. If they had had good nutrition, good education, the opportunity, they might come up with uh, a cure for cancer. We don't need to create more people. We need to take care of the ones that are here. Don't breed them, feed them. So where do you... Uh, and, and again, I, you know, as you, as you continually point out, uh, you, 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 you're, what, you're just one voice and you know, I could have this conversation with a dozen different people you know, in the movement and, uh, and, and get different answers. So yeah, uh, uh, I, to talk about that a moment, about what, what you mean that this, that, that this is a, a, a movement. What do you need to become a, do, do, you, do you have a card, a bumper sticker? What do you need to do to become a member of, of Vehement? To decide not to procreate more than you already have. There are people who have already procreated and then they realize, you know, further procreation is not good for this planet, and they don't encourage their offspring to give them grandkids when they uh, get to that age. Uh, and so anybody can uh, become, can achieve this uh, awareness, and that's all it is. It's an awareness. It isn't even a philosophy. There are philosophies like uh, antenatalism that uh, lead people to vehement, but itself is not. It is simply what the name says. We um, think that uh, we should voluntarily uh, go extinct, and, and that's it. The rest of it is all personal um, re uh, motivations and uh, reasons, and how much people want to promote it is entirely up to them, too. So by, but, but it, would it be safe to say that <clears throat> the whole concept of anti-natalism, uh, can you be... Can, can you be part of the vehement movement and at the same time not be anti-natalist? Or is that too weird of a Most certainly. question? No, sure. Uh, of course. Uh, even though uh, anti-natalism logically leads to the voluntary human extinction yeah, movement, uh, uh, there are people who are motivated because of uh, humanitarian reasons, although anti-natalism does have that faction as well. They are uh, motivated because they know that uh, if there are fewer of us, we'll be better able to take care of the people who are here. And if they don't procreate, they'll be able to do a better job of caring for people. But uh, people are motivated by uh, our treatment of non-human animals. And they realize that each new person created is going to harm uh, non-human animals, even if they're vegan. Uh, it's just unavoidable. The more of us there are, the fewer of them. And, uh, oh, let's see, there are, I'm sure there are some nihilists who think that, you know, uh, humans have no 
uh, reason to exist, and uh, that's a terrible thing to have to endure. Uh, oh, another one, one that um, uh, Kurt Vonnegut uh, said in one of his last interviews is that uh, the way we treat each other, he's uh, in World War II, informed his uh, reality tremendously. Uh, and he's saying, look, we've had two world wars. I think we've had enough. We should just uh, phase out, or I'm not sure what term he used, but basically, uh, you know, this, this experiment is, is not good for each other. We just don't treat each other nice. So there's another reason. There's a lot of, uh, no, nobody has just one reason. Like I am motivated by both uh, humanitarian and ecological reasons. So what, and, and I, I, I know you're a little bit uh, loath to, to talk about yourself, but can you share with us, what, what was it a sudden epiphany with you when you actually reached this level of conclusion, or was it just a drip, drip, drip of daily environmental news over the years? I mean, what was it when you finally said, there's only one solution, and that's for us to go in your own personal history. Yes, it was a slow. It wasn't all of a sudden I got it. It was a slow drip. I joined uh, Zero Population Growth when I was in college in the early 70s, and uh, their motto was Stop at Two, which is a pretty easy motto to get people to <laughs> accept because that's what they were doing anyway. So I thought, well, wait a minute, stopping at two, do the math on that. That's not adequate. You can't stop at two. So I thought, well, how about in a moratorium for 20 years? And then we <laughs> then I realized, you know, there's no reason to ever eat, uh, let up on that moratorium. So just little by little, I realized uh, I came to the awareness. And a lot of people have. People have thought of this independently. I hear from people all the time saying, I thought I was the only one who thought this. If people start thinking all the way through, think logically and with love and compassion, I think eventually they will arrive at the conclusion that humans should phase themselves out peacefully, uh, but you have to overcome some really strong roadblocks along the way, and natalism is uh, probably the most serious one. How do you define natalism in this context? That's the idea that uh, giving birth, increasing, uh, you know, creating a new one of us is always a positive event. There, it's always good. Yeah. Post it on Facebook, no matter what your conditions are. Even if they know you've got a, an addiction problem, everybody's going to go, congratulations, congratulations. You know, it is absolutely a good, regardless. Right. And then from that, of course, all sorts of uh, weird pressure. And uh, I think even the patriarchy grows out of this uh, natalism. So what, what do you say to your friends uh, when now, I guess, it? I mean, I don't know, how, how old are you, Les? Uh, I'm over 70, but I still have friends who are procreating, and it is difficult. Uh, yeah, well, I say I figured it was mostly uh, grandchildren at this point. Like, I'm, I'm 59, so I'm at that age where now it's grandchildren. What do you say when uh, they, they bring out the smartphone you know, and you're sitting around the table with friends and they're passing around pictures of their brand new bouncing bundle of joy. Do you just cave in and go along with it or do you get up and uh, go to the bathroom? How do you handle that social situation? I've got a picture of a chimpanzee uh, <laughs> that I have uh, adopted. He lives in Cameroon. I just send him money, you know, he never writes, never calls. But it's like having a real kid. So I say, you know, yeah, here's here's mine, and and of course that's you know, it's a humorous way of uh, getting my point across. And if I get a chance, I'll tell them, you know, there are more humans born every day than the entire population of great apes on the planet. And of course, you know, I, I leave it at that. I could get carried away if I if I kept going on it. But I friendship is more important than sticking by some uh, ideal, you know, uh, that I have. Uh, so I remain friends with people who uh, choose to procreate, even though it makes me very sad to think about what that child is going to have to live through. 
Yeah, uh, I, I, I know exactly how you feel, brother, and I'm sure a lot of people listening to this uh, experience the same thing. A few minutes ago, you mentioned the, the dreaded V word, uh, veganism. And it just, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to pick on vegans here, but where I want to go with this, uh, I remember when it came out, I can't remember who did this thing, uh, I believe it was two summers ago, I remember doing a, talking about the, this image, this graphic, and what it showed was they made like a solar system of lifestyle and consumer choices that a that a person can make and you had not having children as the size of the sun and then every other thing veganism not owning a car at all they, they had electric car bicycle recycling you, you know where i'm going with this and every yeah. other lifestyle and consumer choice combined uh, next to not having children, it were completely dwarfed, like like the the sun to the planet Mercury. Talk about lifestyle and consumer choices saving the planet that do not include not breeding. Well, all of our uh, great work that we individually do would, of course, be negated by uh, creating a new human being, especially in uh, parts of the world that are wealthy as, as ours are. We have uh, an ecological footprint of uh, almost 17 uh, acres, uh, which is about 15 football fields. So uh, even um, the best we can do would be negated by uh, procreation. As those charts show, there's a, also a bar graph that they had, but when they got to uh, adding one more human, they had to break the scale because it went off the page, you know. So uh, how people choose to lower their um, ecological footprint is a very personal thing, and some people can't not drive. They don't live where they can. Uh, some people can. Some people, uh, don't want to completely cut meat out of their diet. That's their personal choice. Everybody has a choice as to how they reduce their ecological footprint, even uh, whether they procreate or not. That's their their personal choice. This is a voluntary movement, so we're not going to shame and blame uh, and uh, you know say you know you're you're destroying 15 football fields of uh, potential wildlife habitat by creating that new human, you know, that sort of thing really is, is uh, counterproductive. Yeah, I have a friend I've mentioned that she lives in Ecuador. She is pretty much a beef eater. That seems to be the main, the, the main component of her diet is beef. She drives one of these big old SUVs uh, she built one of these gringo, you can imagine, down there in Ecuador, but she's not a breeder. And she says, <laughs> Sam, uh, I, I, can have, I can eat T-bone steak three times a day and drive a Hummer and, and live in a mansion uh, the size of Al Gore's house uh, for the rest of my life because I've earned my, because I didn't breed, and so th this, is, this is my reward. So what, what do you say, to, you know, so let's turn this on its ear. So people who make that statement, do they, is she right? Do, do, do people who make the choice not to breed, does that give them license to do whatever else they want to in, in their consumer and lifestyle choices since they made the big choice? Well, that's, that's their personal uh, decision.